U.S. Senate confirm Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. A tremendous victory for our nation, our people, and our beloved Constitution. Judge Brett Kavanaugh was sworn in as our 114th Supreme Court Justice. This is arguably the high point of the Trump presidency to date. <laughs> this was a vindication, a vindication of Trumpism. And Susan Collins was a star. What she did was incredible. She's more popular now than she's ever been. All of this coming after a confirmation battle that's literally rocked Washington and further divided the nation. <laughs> You don't hand matches to an arsonist, and you don't give power to an angry left-wing mob. Republicans believe the controversy has fired up their conservative base ahead of the midterms. We have been energized. The only reason to vote Democrat is if you're tired of winning. Right? We want to win, win, win. It is Sunday, October 7th, and America has a new Supreme Court justice. Did you hear? I heard. Did I you heard. Hear? If you didn't know, you would have known if you watched the rally, because last night, boy, there was a lot of premium. Beers for Brett. Yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> going to say, he deserves that, a beer. That was the hashtag <laughs> trending yesterday on Twitter. Beers for Brett. Yeah, people saying, hey. Congratulations. And this president and that Senate delivered on this nomination. It is. And, you know, the historical uh, moment really can't be overstated because of what President Trump said he was going to do when he ran for, you know, he took out a field of 16 Republicans. Yep. And he came in with a conservative agenda and everybody said, nope. No way that guy's going to do that. And now he has really put the final piece of the puzzle. As I was telling Peter earlier, if you remember uh, a great movie, I believe it was in the 80s or 90s, Excalibur. It's like if you look at the conservative agenda of the last half century and you go from a conservative court, low taxes, tax cuts, strong military, booming economy, deregulation, fair trade uh, playing field, President Trump is your King Arthur that went and pulled Excalibur out of the rock and hit it with conservatives and said, here you go. No, that's that exactly right. That is a right. great analogy. Wasn't that great? That was, he told me that great. at 5.15 this morning. I was like, you better use that. <laughs> well, President Trump was in Topeka, Kansas, and he was celebrating and slamming Democrats as an angry mob. Take a look. I stand before you today on the heels of a tremendous victory for our nation, our people, and our beloved Constitution. The biggest thing a president can do, they've always said, is Supreme Court justice, the biggest. We've had two in less than two years, I guess, you know. Radical Democrats launched a disgraceful campaign to resist, obstruct, delay, demolish, and destroy right from the beginning. In their quest for power, the radical Democrats have turned into an angry mob. You don't hand matches to an arsonist, and you don't give power to an angry left-wing mob. Republicans believe in the rule of law, not the rule of the mob. I would argue the smartest move he made as a candidate was saying, uh, I'm going to stick to my 20 judges I have on this list. Yes. They're all, they all have faithfulness to the Constitution. These are the guys or gals I'm going to pick. You vote for me, that's who I'm going to deliver. And that's exactly, exactly what he did deliver. You know, and it was such a great strategy. No one's ever done that before, by the way. Yeah. No one has ever run for president and in advance say, here's the list of people. And, and there was a good reason for him to do that, right? Because a lot of people didn't know whether to trust sure. him or not. But if you look in, the in that rally right behind him, promises made promises kept yeah and right. this is a promise that he he is really keeping and and not only was it a good strategy to give the list but the person he put forward um, Brett Kavanaugh was one that base conservatives weren't totally thrilled with but the never Trumpers and the Bush people liked and so it ended up because he knew they were going to attack him it ended up being a unifying um, uh, pick because they ended up yeah. fighting together against the Dems. And he was treated so terribly, but at the end of the, at the, end of the day, he was bulletproof. And you know what? 
Be careful what you wish for. Be, care be careful when you overplay your hand, because you just might get a more conservative justice than you had when the process <laughs> started. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. He's he's bull he's straightforward on the on the Constitution, we but we'll see where it goes from here, Griff. We may yet get a chance to see because uh, now Associate yeah. Justice Kavanaugh will take to the court. Uh, the term just started. There's four cases I believe they're going to hear this week. He will be among them. But but you talk about. So does it happen that fast? I mean, you just yeah. you're it, sworn it, in and boom, you're in. The, the boom. It's like Greatest Show host Fox and Friends. You're in. Go. That's yeah. what happened to me. <laughs> the, 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 the picture we were just showing, that's uh, Chief Justice Roberts swearing in. Wow. Brett Kavanaugh, he is now officially, we should call him Justice, Associate Justice. Uh, and they have, I believe, three or four hearings that will take place uh, this week. And, and uh, Associate Justice Kavanaugh will be among And I understand there's a, a private, uh, there was a private ceremony yesterday, but Monday, there's going, tomorrow, there's going to be a, a ceremony at the White House. And that, that's just ceremonial. Uh, okay. But the actual uh, official uh, uh, he's seating already has in. happened. But, but let, me, let me get to this point. That is, you know, what we're going to see now also this week is the left apoplectic. More, and we yeah. saw a little bit of it. Not More? Just, not just the protesters, but it is Democrats now realize we're 30 days from a midterm election. Yeah. And this momentum is going to fuel both sides, both Republicans yeah. and Democrats. And you're already seeing, of course, Senator Dianne Feinstein uh, tweeting yesterday, uh, confirming Brett Kavanaugh in the face of credible allegations of sexual assault that were not thoroughly investigated and his belligerent partisan performance in the last Thursday's hearing undermines the legitimacy of the court. So That's while what the they're court calling it now is the legitimacy of the Supreme Court. That's how far the left has gone. So a duly elected president nominates a qualified candidate. He gets confirmed by the Senate through advising consent. But no, 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 the Supreme Court is not legitimate. Listen to Eric Holder. I'm sorry to trigger you this morning this early. I, it pains me to read it, but I've got to. This is what Eric Holder tweeted yesterday. With the confirmation of Kavanaugh and the process which led to it and the treatment of Merrick Garland, who is not a Supreme Court justice, I will note, the legitimacy of the Supreme Court can justifiably be questioned. The court must now prove through its work that it's worthy of the nation's trust. So America's former attorney general, top cop, says, nah, I don't know if we should we should. Uh, Pay much credence. Well, to the they're play, they're over. It, 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 we'll find out whether or not Democrats are overplaying their hand here in the sense that you know you're not just attacking well, already overplayed. Kavanaugh anymore. You're you're questioning the legitimacy of the court. But we certainly were treated to a lot of protesters. And Mitch McConnell, but, the Senate Majority Leader, he says thanks. Griff, I love you, but let's. I, I I'm done hearing about the protesters. And I think Trump did it so well last night. He said. You got the 200 people probably paid for outside the Supreme Court. Yeah. You couldn't fit them in the front row of my rally here. <laughs> 10,000 people in Kansas. Stop comparing. Paid protesters who are clearly a noisy. We obsessed, uh, other networks obsessed over the few people that yelled out during the vote yesterday, which I watched live. So 12 people yelled and got escorted out, and 50 people voted for a highly qualified man. That's what we should be talking about. Absolutely. Well, one thing that the president is talking about and brought up in the rally is 2020. He's already chomping at the bit. Here's President Trump talking about his possible opponents in 2020. I'm dreaming of those candidates. I see those candidates before my eyes every night before I go to sleep. Sometimes while I'm sleeping, I love them so much. Cory Booker, sleepy Joe Biden, who, who ran for president two or three times. Remember, he challenged me to a fight. I'd love that. That would be, that wouldn't last long. That would not last long. The only reason to vote Democrat is if you're tired of winning, right? Tired of winning. We want to win, win, win. We want to win, win, win. I'm not tired. I don't think you're tired either. There, there could be an additional face added there. Of course, he called out Elizabeth Warren saying Pocahontas, he's got more Native American blood in him than she does. We'll see if she takes a DNA test. But he's, he shows he's willing to throw down on anyone who would be a potential. And how do you run against his performance at this point? Absolutely. By the way, he did this, something I see you do a lot. Really? Um, he called out <laughs> Pocahontas. You've never seen so, me do that, uh, yeah, ever. Yeah, something you do also, ch challenging po Pocahontas to a DNA <laughs> test. Another. I, I, I feel like maybe the president watches this show. What do you think, Pete? You never know. I don't know. We'll see. We're just glad, we're glad you watch. Our most important viewer is you. And we want your comments. What did you think? I mean, just overall, it's a grab bag. It's grab bag Sunday today. What did you think of, of the nomination, of the process, of his rally last night, of the candidates he may run against, 
of his record of accomplishment. We want to run it. Friends at FoxNews.com. We're going to make it a family show this morning. Absolutely. But You're included. Not? And we want to know what you think about the Democrats' plan. Their mantra is questioning the legitimacy of the Supreme Court. I think that's a very significant uh, thing as we go to the it's, midterms. It's a very socialist thing to do, by the way. Yeah. I mean, to, to delegitimize our institutions. It's actually, I hope we pick this up later on, because this is a very important topic. Because this is why they're so angry. What they can't do at the ballot box, they have always used the courts and the deep state to do. And now he's cleaning out the swamp, so it's a little harder for them to do it through the deep state. And now they're losing their other tool for getting it's their It's amazing. You done. watched that rally last night. Just the name Brett Kavanaugh is an applause line. Yeah. You just say the name and the base reacts. And the question is, can that enthusiasm be maintained all the way through November? That'll be the And we're question. going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, yeah. in, right at, well, we're first going to get to some headlines. Okay. So let's do some headlines first. <laughs> a police officer is shot and a suspect killed in an intense gun battle at an apartment complex. Officer Samuel Galuzzi is recovering from bullet wounds to his thigh and ankle. Police in Nashville, Tennessee, spotting Shershawn Dillon while responding to shots fired. Uh, fired. Dylan, also matching the description of a sexual assault incident, was holding several people hostage during the shootout. He later died at the hospital. The 24-year-old injured officer is expected to be okay, and we are very grateful for that. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo arriving in South Korea a short time ago. The top U.S. diplomat meeting with President Moon Jae-in this morning following a visit to North Korea. Overnight, Pompeo writing on Twitter, Critical nuclear talks with Kim Jong-un are making progress. He'll wrap up his East Asia tour with a stop in China. Turning to extreme weather, a new system now threatening the Gulf course, likely strengthening into Tropical Storm Michael by tonight. Heavy rainfall, a storm surge, and near hurricane strength winds are expected when it hits the U.S. The storm possibly making landfall on Wednesday in the Florida Panhandle. Right, paging Rick Reichmuth. He'll be with us later, I'm sure. Well, now it, to the Major League Baseball playoffs. A look at Aaron Judge, how he powers the New York Yankees past the Red Sox. Look at this. Oh, high drive, way back. Deep left center field. Goodbye. My goodness, Aaron Judge. That was the deepest part of Fenway Park, by the way. That was the first of three dingers last night was as the Yankees, not, not three from him, Sanchez had two, he had one. The Yankees win 6-2 to two over the Red Sox. It's coming back to Yankee Stadium here in New York City. A lot of our folks on the crew are very excited about this. And Houston pitcher Garrett Cole striking out 12 batters in, in route to a 3-1 to one win over the Cleveland Indians. The Astros looking to close out the series tomorrow night. I do love watching baseball. I watch baseball over college football. I love college football, too, but playoff baseball. But I, I also fell asleep at 7.30, so I didn't actually sure. see the Yankee game. I just watched the highlights this morning. You got the game, and you got a rally, which reminds me, President Trump rallying a crowd of thousands for midterm hopefuls. Steve is a great veteran. He's a patriot. Vote to send Steve Watkins to Congress. Well, lucky for you, that candidate, Steve Watkins, joins us live. That's coming up. Plus, Nancy Pelosi is not giving up in the fight against now Associate Justice Brett Kavanaugh. It's official. Wait until you hear her, her latest effort to resist. That's coming up. This is my fight song. Take back my life song. Prove that I'm all right song. And more products made right here in the USA, finally. Steve is a great veteran. He's a patriot. Vote to send Steve Watkins to Congress. That's President Trump firing up supporters in Kansas, delivering a high-energy message in a state he won in a landslide in 2016. Here now on the heels of a very busy night, that U.S. Army vet, GOP congressional candidate Steve Watkins. Steve, thanks for being here this morning. Uh, we were watching on TV. You were there on stage. Uh, the impact of Brett Kavanaugh being a new Supreme Court justice and the momentum this president has, what does it mean for you, your candidacy in the state? Oh, man, I tell you what, having the president there was real electrifying. And Kavanaugh, you know, moderates and any sensible pe uh, folks here in Kansas don't like how he was treated by Democrats. So it will have an impact on our election for sure. So you grew up just a few miles away from where that rally took place. What did it feel like for you to get up there among all the people that you know in that area and then be right next to the president of the United States, or as you said, the, the, the leader of the free world? 
Well, it aligns with my uh, campaign slogan that is Kansans can do anything. And I'm just a simple Kansas boy. And to, to be up there next to the president, it meant a lot to me. And it meant a lot to my campaign and to the voters in Kansas. You know, it, it's a reminder to us all that Kansas Second matters. The party that controls the House of Representatives could very well come down to Kansas Second. So it's important that we all get out and vote. How are the polls in your race right now? Well, it's neck and neck. You know, okay. the, I believe it was the New York Times had uh, uh, him up by one. We had, uh, we've had another internal polling that uh, seems that it's all just within margin of error. But we expect uh, last night's rally to to allow for a bit of a surge, and uh, we're expecting good things. We're going to work hard until November. Great, Steve. Thank you for your service uh, to our nation. Let me ask you though, uh, what is your response to critics? Uh, there are some accusations that uh, that you weren't truthful about uh, an incident that was involved climbers on Mount Everest. Listen, that was absolutely fake news by uh, local uh, media and AP. Listen, I, I ha up on the mountain, uh, there was a, a compliments exchanged that were not remembered correctly, but I no way uh, was uh, intentionally deceiving anybody. I look up to the climber who I had that conversation with. I never claimed to do anything. There's nothing that I did or didn't do that's in dispute. There was just a compliment that was misunderstood after the earthquake and after se several well, fatalities. Steve, let's so, talk uh, about, let's talk about yeah. your real news, though. Uh, you served in the military. Tell us about your service. Well, I served 10 years, starting off with four years at West Point, class of 99. And then I uh, was stationed in Alaska. I chose Alaska because I'm an outdoorsman at heart. And after 9-11, I was scheduled to get out of the military. But I voluntarily extended so that I could deploy to Afghanistan. I served in the coast province there. In coast. Steve. No friendly place. I, I, I'm usually in Washington covering politics and in many primaries this year so far. We've seen the Trump bump. Uh, do you see the Trump bump playing a factor in, in your race? Absolutely. It's a reminder to us all that the president cares about this race, that our issues matter, and uh, his approach to problem solving and limited government, low taxes, uh, b uh, securing our border, that these are the same things that we value as well. And so uh, this is, uh, his, his rally here has rejuvenated us, and uh, we are very, very fired up. Well, you may be part of the balance of the House of Representatives. Right. We'll see. Uh, how it ends up. And you might become a colleague of Rachel's husband. We'll yeah. <laughs> Quite possibly. You really like that, I bet. Steve, <laughs> Steve Watkins, so. good luck in your race. We I appreciate so. your time. Thank, Thank you. you, Steve. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Got it. All right. Well, Nancy Pelosi is not giving up in the fight against Associate Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Wait until you hear her latest effort to resist. That's coming up. And conservative women come together for one mission. I talk with them about politics and the world we live in next. know that we've got it good. Where the stars and stripes and the eagle fly. Well, predictably, Democrats are not giving up their fight against Associate Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Now, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi wants the FBI report to go public as she and others hint at a Kavanaugh impeachment. Jennifer Griffin is live in Washington. Jennifer, tell us more about this. Well, Rachel, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi questioned the FBI investigation into Kavanaugh in a statement last night. Quote, therefore, I am announcing that I will file a Freedom of Information Act request so that the public can see the FBI report, transcripts of the underlying interviews, instructions sent to the FBI from the White House, and any communications to the FBI from Senate Republicans regarding the scope of the investigation. There are 23 women senators, 17 are Democrats, six Republican, one of those Republicans, Senator Susan Collins, who cast the deciding vote for Kavanaugh, is up for re-election in 2020 and finds herself in the crosshairs of women who believe she betrayed their concerns. In Maine, a fund was set up to fund her opponent in 2020. That fund now has raised in the past few days $3 million. The left would block anything Donald Trump did. They could send up Mother Teresa, and the left would say, oh, my gosh, she's Catholic. And so they would block her. They got nothing to hide. Why are they rushing? And I hope for the sake of the court and the Senate that more things don't come out. Last night, lawyers for Kavanaugh's accuser, Christine Blasey Ford, provided Fox's Shannon Bream with a signed affidavit from Keith Kugler, a friend who says that he was told Kavanaugh had attacked Ford before he was nominated to the Supreme Court. He was never interviewed by the FBI. Back to you. All Jennifer, right, thank Jennifer, you. thank you. Appreciate it.
And conservative women from all across the country are gathering together this week at the first ever Women for America First Summit in Washington, D.C. And I had the opportunity to speak some of the, to some of those women about why they support President Trump and his agenda. Check out this package. We are at the Women for America First Summit put on by Women for Trump. These ladies are ready to fight. Their motto is heels on, gloves off. We're going to talk to some of them right now to find out why they are so on fire. been hearing from women across the country that they want to come together and so we threw this together so that we can be with like-minded women and talk about why Donald Trump's America First agenda is an agenda for women and all Americans. We have an amazing lineup. We've heard from Sarah Sanders. The work that we do just because it's more out front is certainly not as important or more important than all of the work that each of you do every single day supporting this president. There's a lot of women out there who support Trump but they're getting pushed back from the media and from the culture saying how can you support Trump as a woman as if there's a woman card that will be removed from you um, if you don't do those things there's a hundred over a hundred women here today for this conference um, what do you say to people who believe that I, for me it's real simple I, I look at the policies of the individual uh, I believe in uh, individual responsibility I believe in lower taxes I believe in growing our economy fighting for better trade deals safer stronger communities better education these are all things um, not just as a woman but as a parent that matter to me this is a president who believes in strong powerful women just look at all the ones around him uh, and he believes in empowering them but in doing so to put them on a ground where they know they can do anything they want to do women's issues are the same as everybody as the same as the men except there's a there's a focus on is my family safe? Is my country safe? And what, what are we going to do from here? We voted for somebody to come in and clean up the swamp and get the truth back where it should be. One of the tactics of the left is to say that they represent all women. And you being here today says what to those women? They would be surprised how few women they represent. <laughs> yes, they don't re represent this woman, that's for sure. Do you think the left was expecting this Kavanaugh effect on the right? I don't think they were. And uh, they're still mad because they lost the 2016 presidential election. So uh, this is what they're going to do. They're going to have a temper tantrum. No one should suffer what this man has gone through. And I got to tell you, if you're a male in America today, this could happen to you. An accusation becoming a conviction is terrifying for all of us. It should be terrifying for mothers of sons. It should be terrifying for mothers of daughters and women in general. So I think that we're going to see a red wave. Now the theme of this summit is heels on, gloves off. What does that mean to you? That means that it's time for the silent majority to become the loud majority. We care about jobs, economy, national security, and we're united together here to support the president and his policies. We have the freedom to put our heels on, take our gloves off, and fight for the values that made this country what it is, and to make America great again. Wow, great job. You know, when I was watching that, Rachel, yeah. it just brought into focus the untalked, we haven't talked much about the role that they're going to play in the midterms, and it brought back mm. the 1996, when Republicans took the majority, the soccer moms. Remember that? That yeah. was moms, middle-class uh, moms in the country that cared about the safety of their kids, that wanted a better future, and now you look at conservative women in that summit. And what Sarah Sanders is saying there is that you're going to see them come out perhaps in, in droves because it is President Trump's agenda that matches their concerns. They're not going to be called soccer moms. They're going to be called... No. They're going to be called football moms. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to call them I, from now on. Or security moms or economic moms. Um, what's interesting is the Kavanaugh uh, the, the, the incidents of last week with Kavanaugh really did energize this, this, this crowd. Now, this crowd, this summit was set up before any of the stuff we saw last week, but these women were on fire for this. And by the way, this is how conservative women organize. They don't put on pink hats. They don't go scream on the steps of the Supreme Court. This is how they do it. But their vote counts just as much as the people who are screaming on the steps. That's right. Um, I heard two things from them that I thought were interesting repeatedly over and over. One was they all felt like Donald Trump ne didn't really have to do this. He's rich. Um, why would he put himself yep. through this? And their conclusion is he loves America. He loves us. And the other thing that they kept talking about is 
we've never seen somebody promise something and actually deliver yep. it from in a, right. the political spirit. So well done, heard Rachel. that over and over. Nice well done. Thanks. All right, well, it was a scene out of Mission Impossible. Seconds after this piece of artwork sold for more than a million dollars, it self-destructed. <laughs> it literally started shredding. What the artist has to say about the jaw-dropping stunt. Plus, leftist activists taking over Washington, D.C., and now we're learning some senators are receiving death threats on their personal cell phones. Dan Bongino joins us next with what it will take for the left to ditch its mob mentality. Here he is. Over the past few weeks, every American has now seen the profound stakes in the upcoming election. You now see it. We have been energized. If Democrats are willing to cause such destruction in the pursuit of power, just imagine the devastation they would cause. The only reason to vote Democrat is if you're tired of winning, right? <laughs> tired of winning. We want to win, win, win. We want to win, win, win. So we're going to bring in Dan Bongino, former NYPD officer. He's a winner. Secret Service agent, host of the Dan Bongino Show, never tired, author of the blockbuster book Spygate, the attempt to sabotage Donald J. Trump, hitting shelves this Tuesday. Spygate, coming out this Tuesday. Get it. If you love his podcast or you love him on the show, you're going to love the book. Dan, sometimes we don't step back enough in these moments and, and, and yeah. take, take stock of what's been accomplished. Talk to us about the gravity of, of this confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah, you know, Pete, I was thinking about this yesterday. I was on Twitter all day. You know, Saturday is usually my day off, and I was working all day. Uh, is I'm Twitter in this your space work, like you are. Is Twitter your work? Yeah, I, I'm a, it is. It is. I'm, like, married it. to it. I, I can't get up. And I, I thought about this yesterday. You know, uh, we've heard from the swamp and the media and the editorial columns of the Washington Post and the New York Times forever, Pete, how inept and incompetent Donald Trump is, right? I mean, we, the, the media just assumes it to be true. Yet don't you find it odd how he just keeps routinely kicking their butts at every, politically speaking, of course, I'll leave the violent stuff for the left, at every single opportunity, we've now seen tax cuts, a, a, a boom in the economy, two Supreme Court justices, we're only two years in. This guy is a builder. Everybody needs to remember this. I grew up in Queens. I know New York well. He builds stuff. The result to him was an actual building you could touch, look at, and feel. He's not a politician where everything exists in yeah. the political uh, ether. He build stuff and he's building a legacy now and I'll tell you he put a big stamp on it yesterday. Well Dan we're going to put up on the wall here so you can see the list of accomplishments of President Trump you can see it coming up there although I can't read all that let me just ask you this though uh, when you look at the conservative court you look at the massive tax cut you look at the strengthening of the military the booming economy the lower uh, uh, lowest unemployment in nearly 50 years I was telling Pete and Rachel earlier I feel like Trump is King Arthur that's pulled Excalibur out of the rot for conservatives. I mean, we've had so many Republicans from George Bush to John McCain to Mitt Romney that tried and couldn't deliver it. Now he's delivered it. Will not only the media is never going to give him the credit for it, but will the people that were never Trumpers finally say he's delivered the conservative promises we've wanted for the last half century? You know, I'm glad you asked that question the way you did, Griff, because that's been the, the big question. We're never going to get the liberal media. Forget that. They just, they, they personally, viscerally dislike Donald Trump and keep humiliating themselves. But what the big question is the never Trumpers, like you said, and the establishmentarians, are they ever going to accept the fact that, all right, you may have some stylistic differences with the president. I personally like his style. But are you ever going to accept the fact that he's actually accomplished stuff? And I think the Kavanaugh selection and the strategic genius of it was a big step to I mean, think about this, Griff. Who was the one guy, the one guy who could unite the factions knowing the Democrats were going to come full bore at him if nominated for the Supreme Court? A Bush guy, Brett Kavanaugh, uh -huh. an yeah. unquestionable conservative, uh -huh. but a Bush appointee. I mean, it was a genius pick, and yet everybody makes it out like Donald Trump just casually walked into it, and this was some kind of, just, oh, he just did it by mistake. It was a strategically genius pick. He united the factions. Great job again. Yeah, they always underestimate him. It's very interesting. So now, always. And, and this, I want to bring up a topic that's actually very personal to me. You know, my husband's a member of Congress. Um, there have now yeah. been death threats pouring into senators' personal cell phones um, since the Kavanaugh confirmation. 
And you can see from some of the statements coming out from Pelosi and others, and, and even this um, uh, from AG Eric Holder, that they are still ready to fight and mob, mob style. Like, they are not putting down their swords. They're not learning their lessons. How long, how long will they keep going with this? Well, sadly, I don't think there is any stop to this. There is no finish line. But let me tell you why, Rachel. There's a reason for this, right? There's a difference between radical liberals and conservatives. I want to be clear. I'm not talking about heartland Democrat voters in America at all. I'm talking about the radical activist left. Here's the issue, right? We as conservatives believe in big R, God-given rights, right? And it puts an automatic emergency break in our behavior. We may dislike people ideologically, but that fact that we believe that God gave you rights and me rights, despite your beliefs, prevents us from... <laughs> obviously from attacking you, God forbid, or anything like that. The radical left has no emergency break. They're takers. They need to take your money, take your kids' education, your health care, and to do that, they need state power. Mm. And when they lose state power, and they lose the courts, and they lose the presidency, and they lose governorships, there's nowhere else to go, Rachel. There's no emergency oh, break. So, so they lash out. There's that's, one that's place for them to go, this. Dan. One place, and it's Iowa, because for so much of this this spectacle in the Senate, it was about 2020 for these ambitious senators, yeah. one of which Cory Spartacus Booker found himself in Iowa yesterday, uh, you know, playing off of this issue. This is what he said yesterday in Des Moines, Iowa. We're not defined by a president who mocks a hero in Dr. Blasey Ford. We're not defined. We're not defined by a president who does not believe women, we're going to be defined when this state not only says that we believe women, but we elect women. Just happened to be in Iowa. What do you think, Dan? Yeah. Well, he's embarrassed himself, uh, Spartacus. He always reminds me of that Clueless movie with Alicia Silverstone where <laughs> she can't pronounce Spartacus. She calls him Sporadicus. That's, that's Cory Booker. He's not Spartacus. He's Sporadicus. But what's really annoying about that is I refuse to accept that narrative. Listen, guys, uh, Dr. Ford was treated with respect and dignity. You may, not, you may not think her story as she told it was accurate. You might. I don't know where you stand. I'm just saying she was given the opportunity by the United States Senate and the Republican and Donald Trump, by the way, who had no problems with that. He actually incentivized them and said they should do it to go and tell her story in front of the United States Senate. So saying somehow Donald Trump doesn't believe women and he mocked uh, Dr. Ford there, he did not mock her. He transcribed, for, uh, it was a transcription of what she said. She couldn't remember details of the event. And I'm sorry, but Brett Kavanaugh was entitled to defend himself, and Donald Trump was entitled to defend his nominee. Both That's sides right. were heard, and one side mm -hmm. did not have the corroborating evidence. It's really that simple. That is absolutely right. Dan Bongino, thank you very much. As always, we appreciate having you. Thanks, Dan. You're in a better Thanks, mood guys. this week Thanks. than you were last week. Because oh, winning, you, winning improves that. the mood. I was, <laughs> I was very tired last week, but thanks, right. guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, All right. Dan. Thanks. All right, we're going to turn to some headlines. A vintage military plane is forced to make an emergency landing on a busy highway. The 1946 aircraft completely losing power in midair shortly after taking off in Mississippi. The pilot and everyone on the ground miraculously walking away without a scratch. The FAA is investigating. Millionaires are building luxury panic rooms inside their homes to hide from MS-13. They say several murders linked to the notorious gang has them on edge in the Hamptons. Their panic rooms aren't just comfortable, according to the New York Post. They are complete with fingerprint recognition and shatterproof glass. Panic room can cost up to $200,000. That's why Donald Trump was helping people who, you know, can't afford a panic room. Um, anonymous street artist Pete Banksy now revealing that he's behind the self-destruction of his own painting moments after it sold for $1.4 million. Take a look. That's selling for $860. Experts believe the shredded masterpiece increased at least 50% in value since it's part of art history. Banksy posting this on Instagram of a shredder being built in the frame. I didn't know about Banksy, but now we do. Think about the baller move that is, I'm gonna auction off this painting, and then right when it's sold, I'm gonna hit a button and it's gonna shred, and now it's gonna be worth twice as much? <laughs> I love it so 
That's my favorite the, story the of the things life. we call art. We nominated Supreme Court nominee. Sorry, anyway. All right, I'm being yelled at and told to go. Republican enthusiasm for President Trump and his accomplishments are in fever pitch. Our next guest explains why the president needs to stay in campaign mode. Plus, SNL goes all in against Republicans who supported Associate <laughs> Justice Kavanaugh. Their locker room celebration is ahead. <laughs> Mitch, how are you feeling? Uh, that was awesome. Woo! Oh, winning! Well, predictably, Democrats are not giving up their fight against Associate Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Now, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi wants the FBI report to go public as she and others hint at a Kavanaugh impeachment. Jennifer Griffin is live in Washington. Jennifer, tell us more about this. Well, Rachel, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi questioned the FBI investigation into Kavanaugh in a statement last night. Quote, therefore, I am announcing that I will file a Freedom of Information Act request so that the public can see the FBI report, transcripts of the underlying interviews, instructions sent to the FBI from the White House, and any communications to the FBI from Senate Republicans regarding the scope of the investigation. There are 23 women senators, 17 are Democrats, six Republican, one of those Republicans, Senator Susan Collins, who cast the deciding vote for Kavanaugh, is up for re-election in 2020 and finds herself in the crosshairs of women who believe she betrayed their concerns. In Maine, a fund was set up to fund her opponent in 2020. That fund now has raised, in the past few days, $3 million. The left would block anything Donald Trump did. They could send up Mother Teresa, and the left would say, oh, my gosh, she's Catholic. And so they would block her. They got nothing to hide. Why are they rushing? And I hope for the sake of the court and the Senate that more things don't come out. Last night, lawyers for Kavanaugh's accuser, Christine Blasey Ford, provided Fox's Shannon Bream with a signed affidavit from Keith Kugler, a friend who says that he was told Kavanaugh had attacked Ford before he was nominated to the Supreme Court. He was never interviewed by the FBI. Back to you. Jennifer, All right, thank Jennifer, you. thank you. Appreciate it. And conservative women from all across the country are gathering together this week at the first ever Women for America First Summit in Washington, D.C. And I had the opportunity to speak some of the, to some of those women about why they support President Trump and his agenda. Check out this package. We are at the Women for America First Summit put on by Women for Trump. These ladies are ready to fight. Their motto is heels on, gloves off. We're going to talk to some of them right now to find out why they are so on fire. been hearing from women across the country that they want to come together and so we threw this together so that we can be with like-minded women and talk about why Donald Trump's America First agenda is an agenda for women and all Americans. We have an amazing lineup. We've heard from Sarah Sanders. The work that we do just because it's more out front is certainly not as important or more important than all of the work that each of you do every single day supporting this president. There's a lot of women out there who support Trump but they're getting pushback from the media and from the culture saying how can you support Trump as a woman as if there's a woman card that will be removed from you um, if you don't do those things there's a hundred over a hundred women here today for this conference um, what do you say to people who believe that I, for me, it's real simple. I, I look at the policies of the individual. Uh, I believe in uh, individual responsibility. I believe in lower taxes. I believe in growing our economy, fighting for better trade deals, safer, stronger communities, better education. These are all things, um, not just as a woman, but as a parent that matter to me. This is a president who believes in strong, powerful women. Just look at all the ones around him. Uh, and he believes in empowering them, but in doing so, they put them on a ground where they know they can do anything they want to do. Women's issues are the same as everybody, as the same as the men, except there's a, there's a focus on, is my family safe? Is my country safe? And what, what are we going to do from here? We voted for somebody to come in and clean up the swamp and get the truth back where it should be. One of the tactics of the left is to say that they represent all women, and you being here today says what to those women? They would be surprised how few women they represent. <laughs> Yes, they don't re represent this woman, that's for sure. Do you think the left was expecting this Kavanaugh effect on the right? I don't think they were. 
and uh, they're still mad because they lost the 2016 presidential election. So uh, this is what they're going to do. They're going to have a temper tantrum. No one should suffer what this man has gone through. And I got to tell you, if you're a male in America today, this could happen to you. An accusation becoming a conviction is terrifying for all of us. It should be terrifying for mothers of sons. It should be terrifying for mothers of daughters and women in general. So I think that we're going to see a red wave. Now the theme of this summit is heels on, gloves off. What does that mean to you? That means that it's time for the silent majority to become the loud majority. We care about jobs, economy, national security, and we're united together here to support the president and his policies. We have the freedom to put our heels on, take our gloves off, and fight for the values that made this country what it is and to make America great again. Wow, great job. You know, when I was watching that, Rachel, yeah. it just brought into focus the untalked, we haven't talked much about the role that they're going to play in the midterms, and it brought back mm. the 1996, when Republicans took the majority, the soccer moms. Remember that? That yeah. was moms, middle-class uh, moms in the country that cared about the safety of their kids, that wanted a better future, and now you look at conservative women in that summit. And what Sarah Sanders is saying there is that you're going to see them come out perhaps in, in droves because it is President Trump's agenda that matches their concerns. They're not going to be called soccer moms. They're going to be called... No. They're going to be called football moms. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to call them from now on. Or security moms or economic moms. Um, what's interesting is the Kavanaugh... Uh, the, the, the incidents of last week with Kavanaugh really did energize this, this, this crowd. Now, this crowd, this summit was set up before any of the stuff we saw last week, but these women were on fire for this. And by the way, this is how conservative women organize. They don't put on pink hats. They don't go scream on the steps of the Supreme Court. This is how they do it. But their vote counts just as much as the people who are screaming on the steps. That's right. Um, I heard two things from them that I thought were interesting repeatedly over and over. One was they all felt like Donald Trump ne didn't really have to do this. He's rich. Um, why would he put himself yep. through this? And their conclusion is he loves America. He loves us. And the other thing that they kept talking about is we've never seen somebody promise something and actually deliver yep. it from in a, right. the political spirit. So well done. Heard that over and over. Nice well done. Thanks. All right. Well, it was a scene out of Mission Impossible. Seconds after this piece of artwork sold for more than a million dollars, it self-destructed. <laughs> it literally started shredding what the artist has to say about the jaw dropping stunt. Plus, leftist activists taking over Washington, D.C., and now we're learning some senators are receiving death threats on their personal cell phones. Dan Bongino joins us next with what it will take for the left to ditch its mob mentality. Here he is.